Dorian Lee, who combined pristine blue eyes, curling eyelashes, and arresting intelligence and intoxicating sexuality to become one of history's most photographed models, perhaps the first to truly merit the adjective Super Died Monday in Falls Church, Virginia. She was 91. The death was announced by her grandson Thibaut Du Bois. Ms. Lee graced seven Vogue covers in 1946, according to a New Yorker magazine article of the time, and in the next six years appeared on more than 50 more covers of various magazines, Playbill reported. Her images in Revlon's Fire and Ice nail polish and lipstick campaign in the 1950s, for you who love to flirt with fire, who dare to skate on thin ice were shot by Richard Avedon and became Madison Avenue legend. Dorian was truly the best model of our time, Eileen Ford, the doyen of the modeling agency industry, said in an interview with the Roanoke Times in 1997. She instinctively knew what every photographer wanted, and she came alive just at the moment the shutter clicked. Cecil Beaton wrote in his book Photobiography, 1951, that Ms. Lee was as demanding as the eminent photographers who shot her, including Louise Dahlwolf and Irving Penn. He said she could convey many moods, including the sweetness of an 18th-century pastel, the allure of a sergeant portrait, of the poignancy of some unfortunate woman who sat for Modigliani. Ms. Lee's mystique was enhanced by her many romances, which included five marriages counting the one in Mexico to a Spanish marquis who turned out to be already married. There were also the many real or imagined affairs with famous writers, musicians, and photographers, eagerly tabulated by gossip columnists. Ms. Lee was definitely attractive, standing five feet five inches, with an hourglass figure and an alluring smile. She had so much estrogen, like some men are full of testosterone, Carmen Del Orifice, who started modeling in 1945, a year before Ms. Lee, said in an interview with Vanity Fair in 2006. Dorian was so sexy without saying a word, and she was her own person. Truman Capote called his friend Ms. Lee happy-go-lucky, and she had many similarities to Holly Golightly, the heroine of Capote's Breakfast at Tiffany's, not least what Vanity Fair called her wayward lifestyle and reckless bravado. Gerald Clark, Capote's biographer, cautioned skepticism about this resemblance. Half the women he knew, and a few he did not, claimed to be the model for his wacky heroine, he wrote in 1988. It is incontrovertible that Ms. Lee paved the way for her youngest sister, Susie Parker, to become a supermodel, one who possibly eclipsed even Ms. Lee. According to Vanity Fair, Ms. Lee called Ms. Ford and made an offer that Ms. Ford was forever glad she accepted. I will come to your agency if you'll tell me now you'll take my little sister Susie's sight unseen, she said. Ms. Parker died in 2003. Dorian Parker was born on April 23, 1917, in San Antonio. Her daughter young Eve Pacello said her middle name was Lee, contradicting published reports that she picked up that name in adulthood on the advice of a numerologist. The family later moved to Queens, where her father, a chemist and inventor, concocted an improved form of etching acid that made him rich. Ms. Lee attended what was then Randolph-Macon Women's College in Lynchburg, Virginia, majoring in English. While there, she married Marshall Hawkins, with whom she had two children. They were divorced in 1937. She later studied calculus at New York University and got a job working for the Navy doing mechanical drafting. She next worked for the Eastern Aircraft Corporation, helping design airplane wings, beginning at 65 cents an hour and ending up at a dollar. When her eyes bothered her, she took a job with Republic Pictures as an apprentice copywriter. There are many stories of how she fell into modeling, but all begin with her finding her way to the Harry Conover agency. Mr. Conover advised her to go immediately to Harper's Bazaar and tell the editor, Diana Vreeland, that she was 19. She was 27. The first thing Ms. Vreeland said was never to touch her exquisite zigzag eyebrows. Dahlwolf photographed her the next morning wearing a little black tulle hat trimmed with a pink rose. Ms. Lee was on the cover of the June 1944 Harper's Bazaar. Soon she was making $1 a minute, which she said astounded her. Her father insisted she drop the name Parker because he did not approve of modeling. Ms. Lee's success caused him to change his mind about Susie. Besides her daughter, Ms. Pacello of Northport, Alabama, from her second marriage to Roger Mehl, Ms. Lee is survived by a son from her first marriage, T. L. 
Hawkins of McLean, Virginia, and a daughter from her marriage to Serge Bordet, Miranda Bordet, three grandchildren, and two step-grandchildren. A daughter from her marriage to Mr. Hawkins, Marsha Lynn Smith, died in the early 1990s. A son, Kim Blas Parker, from her liaison with the Spanish racing car driver and athlete Alfonso Cabeza de Vaca, Marquis of Portugal, committed suicide in 1977 at 21. Her last husband was Ido Ben-Gurion, whom she married in 1964 and divorced two years later. After modeling, Ms. Lee opened what is usually called the first modeling agency in Paris, ran gourmet restaurants in France, and had successful catering operations in the United States, among other endeavors. She wrote several books about food, including one about pancakes and another featuring fritters. Perhaps mindful of models' concerns about diet, she included a recipe in the fritter book for low-fat, low-cholesterol chocolate donuts. An obituary on Wednesday about Dorian Lee, a prominent model in the 1940s and 1950s, misidentified the college she attended. It was Randolph-Macon Woman's College in Lynchburg, Virginia, which changed its name to Randolph College in 2007. She did not attend Randolph-Macon College in Ashland, Virginia. Because of an editing error, the obituary also omitted the name of her second husband. Dorian Elizabeth was Roger Parker, Mehl, April 23, 1917 to July 7, 2008. Known professionally as Dorian Lee, was an American model and one of the earliest modeling icons of the fashion industry. She is considered one of the first supermodels and was well known in the United States and Europe early life. Dorian Lee Parker was born in San Antonio, Texas, to George and Elizabeth Parker. Her parents married when they were around 17 or 18 years old and Elizabeth promptly gave birth to three daughters in quick succession, Dorian, Florian Sissy, 1918 to 2010, and Georgia Bell, 1921 to 1988. 13 years after the birth of her third daughter, Elizabeth believed she was going through menopause and was shocked to discover that she was pregnant. She gave birth to her fourth daughter, Cecilia, 1932 to 2003, who became known as model and actress Susie Parker. The family moved to Jackson Heights, Queens, soon after Dorian's birth and later to Metuchen, New Jersey. There, George Parker invented a new form of etching acid, the production of which gave him enough income to retire. Dorian graduated from Newton High School in Queens, New York, in 1935 and enrolled at Randolph-Macon Women's College in Lynchburg, Virginia. In her autobiography, Dorian claimed that she was born in 1920 and graduated from high school early in 1935, at the age of 15. She claimed this was because she loved learning, and she took many classes at once since the school was supposedly overcrowded. But this later proven untrue. She also wrote that she was a 17-year-old college sophomore when she first married, when in fact she was 20. Her first husband was Marshall Powell Hawkins, whom she married on a whim in North Carolina in 1937. They had two children, Thomas Lofton, T.L. Hawkins, 1939 to 2014, and Marcia Hawkins, born 1940. The couple separated in the 1940s. After college, Dorian worked as a file clerk at a department store in Manhattan and as a tabulator, keeping track of radio program ratings. Dorian found that she had an aptitude for math, mechanical engineering, and drawing. She began to go to night school at Rutgers and said she learned about mechanical engineering at New York University. According to her autobiography, she enrolled at the Stevens Institute of Technology in Hoboken, New Jersey, and received a BS in mechanical engineering. This was after an aptitude testing laboratory, the Johnson O'Connor Foundation, informed her that she had a talent for engineering. Dorian worked at Bell Laboratories, then during World War II, was a tool designer at Eastern Airlines with their Eastern Aircraft Division. Dorian assisted in the design of airplane wings, beginning at 65 cents an hour and ending up with an hourly wage of $1. After failing to be promoted because she was a woman and because of a wartime freeze on positions, Dorian quit and took a job with Republic Pictures as an apprentice copywriter. While writing ad copy for the B-movies Republic created and distributed to movie houses, she was encouraged by a Mrs. Wabin to try modeling. Modeling career. Taking Mrs. Wabin's advice, in 1944, Dorian went to the Harry Conover Modeling Agency. At 27, Dorian was not only old by modeling standards, 
but at barely 5 feet 5 inches, she was shorter than the other models at the agency. Conover immediately sent her to see Diana Vreeland, the editor of Harper's Bazaar. Dorian met with Vreeland and fashion photographer Louise Dahlwolf, who were intrigued by her zigzagged eyebrows. Vreeland warned her, Do not, do not do anything to those eyebrows. Vreeland asked Dorian to return the next day, to be photographed for the cover of the June 1944 issue of Harper's Bazaar, her very first modeling assignment. Conover told her to tell them she was 19 years old. Later, they were shocked to discover her real age, 27, and that she already had two children. Dorian's parents thought modeling was not respectable, so Dorian used only her first and middle name during her career. When Dorian became an enormous success, though, they thought it was acceptable that their youngest daughter Susie used the Parker last name when she also became a famous model. Their second eldest daughter, Florian, also had modeling photos in Vogue and Harper's Bazaar, but quit when she married a man in the military and was living in Oahu when Pearl Harbor was bombed in 1941. Dorian instantly became busy with modeling assignments, landing on the covers of major magazines such as Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, Paris Match, Life In 1946, because Dorian of her schedule, on the cover Dorian's two children American were sent Vogue to live with her parents in Florida. She worked with famous fashion in New York photographers and traveling Penn, to Europe. John Rawlings, Cecil Beaton, and Paul Radkai. She dated Irving Penn, who later married another model Lisa Fonsegrives on one assignment. She argued with Paul Radkai's wife Karen, who wanted to be a fashion photographer and wanted to take many extra and free photos of Dorian for her portfolio. When Dorian balked at having to pose for Karen without being paid, Karen warned Dorian she would ruin her. Indeed, Vogue never used Dorian again, and Karen became a Vogue photographer for many years. Dorian easily transitioned to working with Harper's Bazaar's new, young photographer Richard Avedon. Avedon would become one of the most famous photographers in history. While living in her apartment in New York, a young author, Truman Capote visited a friend in an apartment near hers. Capote was fascinated by Dorian's lifestyle of non-stop men, coming and goings, and having a store across the street handle her phone calls, since there were no answering machines back in the early 1950s. He struck up a friendship with Dorian and called her Happy Go Lucky. Capote's character Holly Golightly in his famous 1958 novel Breakfast at Tiffany's is said to be largely based on Dorian's life, as well as socialite Gloria Vanderbilt's. Dorian also became well known for her advertising work for Revlon. Revlon began full page, national color advertisements around 1944. Dorian's first ad was for Fatal Apple. This was followed by Sheer Dynamite ultraviolet, fashion plate, and cherries in the snow. In 1952, when she was 35 years old, Richard Avedon photographed her for Revlon's most famous advertising campaign, Fire and I See I End This Two-Page Advertisement. Dorian is wearing a very tight, silver sequined gown wrapped in a huge red wrap that was copied from a Balenciaga original. The dress had hand-sewn silver sequins on it, and it took so long to create that only the front of the dress was finished in time to be photographed for the ad. The back was non-existent and held in place with safety pins. Dorian also had a silver streak put in her black hair. The original ad had Dorian holding her hand in front of her breast. The agency considered the photo too risque, and the ad was reshot. This ad was accompanied by a provocative quiz written by Kay Daly. The ad became an enormous success, winning Advertising Age's Magazine Advertisement of the Year Award. Around 1947, Dorian's sister Florian introduced her to Roger Mehl. He was divorced from Aileen Mehl, who later became the very famous gossip columnist known as Susie. Florian was married to an army officer and Mehl was the youngest Navy commander and fighter ace during World War II. In August 1948, Dorian was two months pregnant when she married Mehl. Dorian's bridemaids were her teen sister Susie and Susie's teen model friend Carmen Del Orifice. Dorian's two older children, who were being raised by her parents in Pomona Park, Florida, came to live with the couple in Pennsylvania. During her marriage to Roger Mehl, Dorian became fed up with Harry Conover's agency. Conover's phones were often busy and it took a very long time for the clients to pay the models for their work. Dorian then decided to start her own modeling agency called the Fashion Bureau. She came up with the idea of the voucher system. With this innovative system, the modeling agency would pay the models weekly, 
instead of the models having to wait to be paid directly by the clients. Often it took companies weeks, months, or even years to pay models for their work. One day at a photographer's studio, Dorian met a young fashion stylist named Eileen Ford. Ford asked how Dorian's modeling agency worked and then decided to start an agency of her own. Eileen, along with her husband Gerard W. Ford, started what would become one of the most prestigious modeling agencies in the world, Ford Models. Dorian closed her agency when she married. She then telephoned Eileen Ford and told her that she would join the Ford agency if they also signed her 15-year-old sister, Susie Parker, sight unseen. Susie, 15 years younger than Dorian, had already been working for the Huntington Hartford agency making $25 per hour. Dorian told Ford she believed Susie should be making $40 per hour. The Ford's agency was only two years old, so they were anxious to represent a famous model like Dorian. They agreed to meet Dorian and Susie for lunch. Dorian was thin, had an extremely small waist, and had black hair and bright blue eyes. The Fords were shocked during their initial meeting to see that Susie was almost six inches taller than Dorian, had a very large frame, and had bright red hair, freckles, and green eyes. In the 1950s, Susie would become even more famous than Dorian and would go on to be a movie and television actress. Dorian gave birth to her daughter, young Eve Mehel, on March 27, 1949. The couple had a house in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, but rarely saw each other. Roger Mehel's naval career stationed him in Atlantic City, and Dorian commuted to New York City and Paris for modeling work. Dorian also began to work more often in Europe with Richard Avedon. In 1952, Dorian also played the part of a model in the play The Fifth Season. Her job as model, mother, and actress was featured in Look Magazine's June 2, 1953, cover story. By then, Dorian had appeared on the covers of more than 50 magazines. On the Look cover, Dorian is quoted as saying, I would rather have a baby than a mink coat. The previous summer in Paris, she had met the married Spanish athlete Alfonso Cabeza de Vaca, Marquis of Portugal, Alfonso de Portugal. Dorian's children again were sent to live with her parents in Florida. Alfonso, Fon, was 11 years younger than Dorian. She was still married to Roger Mehl. Portugal was also married to an older American showgirl named Carol McDaniel, who later married Milton Petrie. Portigo also had a three-year-old daughter with Carol. Fawn told Dorian that years before, he had seen her ultraviolet Revlon ad in a drugstore in Spain and was captivated. Dorian and Fawn were both reluctant to divorce their spouses, but carried on an affair all summer in Paris and Biarritz. Dorian became pregnant by him, but chose to have an abortion because she feared Roger Mehl would divorce her and take full custody of their daughter, Young Eve. Only weeks later, at the end of the summer, Fawn told Dorian that Carol was pregnant with their second child. Dorian returned to the United States and divorced Roger Mehl on November 24, 1954, in Mexico. Fawn then married Dorian in Mexico right away. But since de Portigo was not divorced, the marriage was not legal. Dorian continued her affair with Fawn, even though his wife Carol gave birth to their son Anthony de Portigo around 1954. Coco Chanel, Susie's great friend, told Dorian that she was throwing her life away on an idiot. Despite Chanel's warning, Dorian got pregnant by de Portigo again, even though he was still married to Carol. To avoid a scandalous illegitimate pregnancy and gossip columnists in the United States, Dorian left her three other children with her parents in Florida and fled to Paris and Switzerland. In Switzerland, Dorian spent time with Charlie Chaplin's large family before giving birth to her son Kim Bloss Parker on September 27, 1955. Dorian did not tell her parents about this child, and instead lied and told her family that she was in a tuberculosis clinic. Dorian and de Portigo continued an on-and-off relationship in 1956 and 1957. Life after modeling, living in France with her baby son Kim, Dorian was nearing 40. Her career as a model was coming to a close, so Dorian began the first legal modeling agency in France to support her son. She also had lent the financially irresponsible de Portigo about $15,000. De Portigo, still married, was now also openly dating actress Linda Christian. 
the ex-wife of actor Tyrone Power, in early 1957. On April 23, 1957, Dorian's 40th birthday, DePortigo told Dorian that he was supposedly finally divorcing Carol so they could be legally married. He told her that he was entering the famous Mil Milia car race in Italy on May 8, 1957 and Carol was supposed to sign their divorce papers on May 9th. Instead, on May 8, Dorian received a phone call from DePortigo's mother Olga, informing Dorian that Fon's tire on his Ferrari race car had blown up because he did not stop in time for a tire change. Fawn and his co-driver Edmund Nelson were mutilated and killed in a horrifying crash. When the tire exploded, he lost control of the car and killed nine spectators, including five children. This catastrophe ended the Mil Milia forever death. Dorian died in a Falls Church, Virginia nursing home from Alzheimer's disease at the age of 91 in 2008. In her obituary, her first son, T.L. Hawkins, reminisced about his mother's famous fire and ice photograph. Dorian was survived by three of her five children, son Thomas, T.L. Lofton, who later married Christy Miller, daughter of Ruth Elizabeth McCormick, daughters Young Eve and Miranda Olga, Dorian's son Blaze, Kim, and daughter Marcia Lynn predeceased her. She was also survived by several grandchildren and one remaining Parker sister, Florian, who died at the age of 92 in 2010.